So welcome all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, so let's start this particular session. Scrum Master interview questions, approach, and how do I answer that? See, there will there are multiple questions, thousands of questions that can be asked. But what we would be discussing uh, is the first thing: what is expected out of a Scrum Master? What is that an interviewer generally would like to look into? Um, when when they are actually interviewing a scrum master, so I would say the questions or the knowledge is not that important than the as a person, as an individual, or an attitude or a characteristic that you are. So we would like to focus on those things. And scrum master is also a very good profession or role these days. And people ask me so many questions about what is. Uh, what is the benefit if I become a scrum master and so many things? So I thought of you know let's let's go through some of the uh, knowledge that uh, I have gathered from the internet or uh, throughout my life. So my name is Vijay. Uh, I already given you uh, my introduction in earlier sessions, but would like to go uh, very quickly. I'm a founder of Agile Waters Consulting, um, founder member and uh, Agile Practitioners Group of India. That's a uh, a social agility group that's active since last six years, and we do conferences every year. Uh, green Cubator Foundation, it's an NGO which works towards making the earth green and also helping the startups, uh, the incubators, kind of, you know. Uh, throughout my experience uh, as an enterprise coach, I have coached multiple teams and organizations. My areas of expertise are Scrum, Lean, Kanban, uh, Agile Coaching, Safe DevOps. Um, and I have a lot of hobbies like running marathon, uh, photography, and learning about brain plasticity, even at the uh, later age, how you can actually change your brain. So that is what is my um, study, uh, which is really interesting me uh, a lot. And that's what I'm doing. So yeah, that's about me. So let's go on to the main topic. So facts about Scrum Master, demands, requirements, and perks. What is it? Why should you think of being a Scrum Master or something? So recently, Scrum.org has done a survey. And here are the outcomes. So what are the practices you should know as a Scrum Master? So what is demand in market? <laughs> so if you see, 81% of the people or the Scrum Masters were saying Kanban. Apart from Scrum, what you should know, 81% of the people are saying Kanban, 55% uh, DevOps, 34% uh, people are saying KDD, uh, test-driven development, and 27% people are saying uh, XP as a whole. However, TDD is also part of XP altogether. So if someone asks me what all I should know apart from Scrum, so here is the answer. I, I do not have my, uh, my own answer, but this answers, this gives you an answer. What and how many certifications should I get before I go uh, for a scrum master this thing? So here is again the answer in front of you from that uh, survey by scrum.org. So 55% of the survey participants say that, uh, that I have one certification. 22% they say I have two certifications. 11% say three certifications and, and so on. So I think that gives you an answer. Whether now let's go here. That's that's really really interesting. So is certification necessary? Okay. Even if I'm not a scrum uh, scrum master certified, do I really get a job or not? So especially in India uh, and some of the European countries, I have seen that the companies who have the people who are working for them since long and they see traits of scrum master, they generally tend to hire. So let's see the percentage uh, here uh, and amount of salary that they're getting. Uh, so the indigo color shows you the, the people with the certification and the green color shows you without certification. So this is in the range of, uh, uh, you know, so 24 triple nine, uh, lesser than that. This is the dollar uh, value of salary. So how many people? So 3% of the people, are with uh, certification, 9% are without the certification. But if you go to higher salary range, uh, so the people in the non-certified region gets lesser and lesser and 
uh, these certified people get more and more kind of you know so that's that's they are getting more valuation maybe uh, because nowadays most of the uh, you know recommendations or uh, recruitments are happening via linkedin and linkedin has your certification tab wherein people generally upload their certification that that's one of the way uh, hrs nowadays are filtering it out okay so that's uh, maybe that is that is a handy information for you what are the salaries for scrum masters so i have given you this range from the same survey again so 8% of the people uh, from that survey uh, say they are getting like uh, 24999 dollar uh, or less and this is how it goes so if you see in the uh, 150000 uh, dollar or more uh, price band there are about 8% people across the globe so this is a very big survey done across the globe and uh, almost all the countries participated there now scrum master salaries by region if you actually see uh, the continents and the region so if you on the left side you will see uh the particular uh, range of salaries or the amount that you perks that you get yearly and on the right side this is an average continent wise i would not go into too many figures uh here but if you want to just have a look at it you can just go to um, scrum.org site and search for scrum master Ta- trends 2020 and you will get all this data there it's it's a very a uh, big about 35 page pdf that they have created with all the data there properly interrupt you um, sure i am talking particularly about the western world and i am talking particularly about the eu and uk yes. now since you mentioned certification yeah in these countries certification is very very important all oh, right really? okay yeah uh-huh. it's it's it is a must Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I'm not. Jo- this is not a joke. Yeah? yeah. Let us say, since there are a lot of Indians here, I will interject the Indian words as well. If in the UK you want a job as a janitor, mm-hmm. as a bhangi, you want a job as a janitor. That is the lowest job. It is the lowest paid job. You you cannot have a lower paid job than that. Mm-hmm. even for that you must be certified oh. you have to do a course you have to huh? sit an exam you get okay. a certificate <laughs> only <laughs> then you can get a bungee job okay so certification is everywhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, i i gave you the example of the absolutely lowest job okay. even there you must okay otherwise you will, you will not get it <laughs> that's a very handy information thanks for that <laughs> yeah back to you what sir. about uh, what about uh, uh, nigeria and us what do you feel about this data does that make sense the us is also the us is a bit more relaxed than us mm-hmm. but even they do want certification uh africa i am not very familiar with Yes I have I have done projects in Kenya and Nigeria and Zambia but I don't know what the local uh, you know what the local thinking is mm-hmm. but UK EU to definitely certification is a must certification is a must oh, okay that's a, that's a very handy information if you can share if this data makes sense to your geography in slovakia uh, i mean in the mid europe yes. it's also important on some certification but at least also practice is very important uh, yeah um, people ask you about the scenario yeah they ask you how you should to sit, uh, work in the some situation mm-hmm. and as my colleague she moved to netherlands she told me that um, her husband has a big problem because mm-hmm. he is very experienced but he ha- has no um, network uh, certification yes yeah? so i only heard that in the De- netherlands it's very important to have a um, uh, certification okay so netherlands uh, you have any experience that their certification is not important but experience uh, is more important that's what you're saying okay, that's good information okay. 
so at times you know even in certain continent there are certain companies maybe they have a different attitude uh, towards it but what um, uh, sid was telling was a generalized version of it so that's a very good information thank you so much okay so with that information i told you that you can go to scrum.org site and uh, search for this uh, pdf document there and you'll get it all 35 page document so with that let's go a deep dive into when you go for a scrum master interview what do they really want out of you so from my experience i have been coaching multiple organizations i was as part of their um job interview panel uh mostly in the second round or third round sometimes uh multi many multinational companies like from banks to technology uh, to typical startups even uh what i have seen this is what is my underlying uh, principle when i go for an interview as a interviewer for any of the scrum masters so scrum master needs more of right attitude than more of knowledge do you agree said yeah certainly it's 100% true vijay yeah. yeah so see when uh, I, when i mentioned yeah. certification that was just a kind of you know you can say an entry barrier yes exactly that's an entry barrier yes an entry barrier do yeah. you have a certification yeah immediately the next question is of course uh, how much experience <laughs> do you have <laughs> yes you know so once you go there on the interview table among those chosen ones out of the certification now starts your interview so what is that the person looking at so said you must have also taken certain interviews so you can also uh, pitch in uh, whenever you feel uh, right so what do we really look at as a scrum master what what is the characteristic that we are looking at so knowledge we would go last of this session so as i told you knowledge is important but attitude is more important the characteristics is more important so the person should be a good listener when you approach your interview uh, you should showcase this attitude why this is required as a scrum master you are a leader with no power and then you need to listen to different situations and help team help organization help your customer help your product owner how do you do it better way you should be a good listener and that's a, one of the quality that you need to have you should be appropriately truthful in this world i won't say that absolutely 100% truthful and uh, organization all the time i don't know uh, whether 100% truthfulness whether it really works and that's why i say appropriately truthful so that people trust you <laughs> i say said is I'm smiling <laughs> okay i hope that's a correct statement that i made yeah, here right absolutely absolutely <laughs> okay down to earth since you are expected to be a servant leader so what people are looking at if you are a servant leader on the floor with the people what kind of servant leadership you are showing it here so don't really show off be a servant leader here open minded you shouldn't be really aggressive about you know you can't go wrong you may go wrong i mean you might give certain wrong answers you might not have a really right experience or or maybe a, a wrong experience i mean in in a given scenario and you you can share that absolutely okay why i'll also go to that point should be collaborative that collaboration should come out however this particular feature would not come uh, very heavily in that uh interview but collaborative uh, should be a person as a scrum master so an effective facilitator you can showcase a little bit of facilitation there while answering the questions how how do how do i do that how do i do the facilitation maybe you should have a right approach how do i answer the question understanding it good listener and then put it in such a way you you facilitate that answer in such a way that everybody understands it you know uh, you are looking at everyone and then that's it rather than giving focus to one person lead by example that should come out of your interview you know what you are doing in your own uh, world so why they should hire you so you should be a person that lead by an example so you set an example not all the time but yeah this is how it works 
you should be a little bit of coach material maybe not on the day one but you should have a little inculcation towards that uh, facilitator i have already said and that's a kind of a duplication done here apart from that you should be resourceful you should be solution focused you should have positive attitude you should have experimental let's try attitude you know not everything you know your teams will come out with um you know um, that this is a solution we would like to try okay so what should be your approach oh yeah let's try does it make sense to you yes so sometimes even your uh, interviewer would put you into certain situation you know this is not working and i suggest this or one of the um, team member suggest you this and everybody says yes so what would be your answer to it you are a knowledgeable person so what should be your uh, you should be showing up that let let's try if it makes sense to all of us let's try experimental attitude and that's what is agile all about it's an experimentation for a short time time boxed create environment of psychological safety you should be knowing about what psychological safety is and if you do not show that you, you you are psychologically safe there in that interview then i think you are giving a different um, uh, you know directions to the interview so psychological safety in agile teams is is really really must so you should be comfortable that in that interview approachable is the attitude of a person as a scrum master should be available you should be open minded protective if required so you should also show a trait of protectiveness if you are going as a as a fresh scrum master you do not have any uh, scrum master experience and they are going to entertain you in that case these are the characteristics that you should show yeah uh, no scrum and agile well and practice it you have practiced it somewhere uh, you shouldn't be a bookish uh, you should be having a bookish knowledge that the whole scrum guide of of uh, 16 17 page is absolutely uh, you know by hearted and whenever a question comes and you answer that no i i don't think so that's a right attitude or that's 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 uh, the right answer to give your sh- your answer should be based on the certain facts based on certain experimentation so you should answer in such a way that yes this is what agile is and from my experience okay maybe it is from teams or maybe your personal life experience so how would you put it in such a way that yes the question that you asked uh, is ideally in scrum or agile environment this is how it should work but you know from my experience i have experienced this and this is how it worked and whether it worked or not worked i am trying absolutely okay and you should be a community builder you should be having that knack of community building friendliness because that's the attitude that we want as a scrum master in teams or in organizations yeah so this you should know even before you go for an interview even if you do not have knowledge this is the attitude you have to showcase i'm going to give you an example of two ladies they approached me and they were into my trainings in one of the uh, big banking firm i was a coach there and they said to ceo that uh, the whole organization should understand agility and that's how the organization organizational agility would happen in this company and then there were certain people from hr department the procurement department and you know the two ladies came to me and they say i really liked it you know this is how uh, you know i am the person this is how these are the values that i actually inculcate in my life and i also take care of my home and i also teach students and kids and all and this is how i i really liked it will we get chance and then i said why not let's try it i went to the department head uh, he was a little nervy about it and say um, i said can we try for a short time and we tried it and those two ladies are some of the best scrum masters in that company even today so what was there was there a technical knowledge no there there was there was an an attitude they wanted to experiment they wanted to do it and they had that attitude in them proven already so that's how it worked any questions till now oh uh, if i might again interject yes please uh, can we go back to that slide the previous one 
Uh, yeah. Just to share with everybody, this is just my thought. Sure. What Vijay has listed here is fantastic. I wish somebody had shown me this 10 years back. But anyway, it is what it is. But all of this, if I put in one sentence, you want to be a good scrum master, you have to be a good people person. And that is what all these lists encompasses. When I say a good people person, why a good people person? Because it covers engagement. Engagement with your team, because you have to win the confidence, faith, and trust of your team. Only then, if your team, you are able to develop that confidence, faith, and trust, that means you are serving your team well. And then remember the scrum master is a servant leader role. If you are a good servant, they will make you the leader. You don't have to be the boss. They will make you the boss. But if you serve them well. The same way, that same people, the characteristic of the people person comes outside the team as well. When you are engaging with stakeholders, there are organizations, big organizations, which are a mix. They are not 100% agile. All right. Last year, I was, uh, with, I was introducing Agile into Cargill, you know, which is the world's biggest uh, food chain logistics company. All right. Now, when I went in and I was introducing Ajay, so I went in, there is a PMO. <laughs> there is a PMO okay. in that company. Yeah. I, can't, I can't get rid of that PMO. I cannot wish them away. They are there. They have been there for last 20 years, right? So I, am, I have to engage with them. I have to make friends with them. I have to get them on my side. I have to get their buy-in. Because if I don't get their buy-in, how will I introduce Ajay? They will be resisting me all the time. Just would like to add to that. Uh, yeah. From this survey, if you go there, PMO is the second highest body in organizational setup responsible and accountable for implementing Agile. Yeah. From the survey. <laughs> so, which is why coming back to this thing that you have to be a good people person. You have to engage with that PMO also. You have to make friends with them. You have to get their cooperation and you have to get the cooperation of that middle layer, that program manager, project manager, which was all Prince two and waterfall people. <laughs> okay. But again, you have to get their help. You have to get their cooperation. You have to get their yes. buy-in. Yes. Otherwise they will keep on resisting you. Exactly. So the key is to be a good people person. Yeah. Thank you so much for summing it up in one line or two words, I would say. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that, that really helps. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And you must be well aware of this throughout your life. The whole Agile or Scrum is basically based on empiricism. And what empiricism says is you learn from experience. Especially when Scrum is implemented, the Scrum is implemented in a complex adaptive scenarios when the unknowns are more than the knowns and you will get to know knowns only when you work on something, you explore, you dig out and you get some knowledge. Based on that knowledge, you explore more. So for that, what do we need? We need transparency. Once the things are transparent, you need inspection. Once you inspect whatever you learn from it, you need to adapt it. So it's an incremental and iterative way of empiricism. Every cycle you learn something, every day you learn something, and that's how continuous improvement happens. Now, you also need to showcase this in your interview. That's really important. I have seen many of the blogs and something people are telling about how to answer this question, but I felt this is the crux of it. This, as Sid said, the people person that's coming into characteristics what else you know the real knowledge of agile or scrum is empiricism even if you showcase that in your interview that would be really awesome 
people also ask me what should i know generally so i just created a list knowledge and experience what should i burn down velocity matrices story mapping planning focus scrum of scrum estimation techniques user story mapping facilitation blah 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 you should know this generally from the interview point of view facilitation technique what kind of facilitation techniques because i have seen in my uh, interview uh, sorry to say that but most of the times people when reached the interview table i seen that they were having certificates but not the right experience or n- not the right knowledge they have never, never really discussed about it they have got some certificate i mean they paid somewhere uh, some money and then answered it and then they got the certificate but when i ask those questions what kind of facilitation technique you use and which kind of scenario i mean they were not really having any answers okay so you do help retrospective but what kind of techniques you are use can can you showcase one people were not generally having answers because this is coming from the experience does it mean that you always should have the techniques and this thing can you derive of your own yes you can derive of your own so the principle that is inherent into that particular uh, event or requirement that should be there that's it you should be able to tell that this is what this is how i facilitate and that's absolutely okay yeah so uh said anything to add or no i'll go to questions now okay so situations or questions now i am going into questions so i told you how to approach see your approach is more important than your answers sometimes answers may be wrong and that's absolutely okay but how do you handle that question what kind of agile principles that you are implementing there that is more important however i won't say that every interviewer in this world would be doing it that way i'm saying most of the times i have seen some of the uh, interviews happening in this way that do you know are you pmp that's a question i, have, uh, I mean somebody asked in my uh, in one of the agile interviews i was actually uh, an interviewer person beside me asking do you know pmp do you know risk management do you know so many things blah 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 this may also happen but you should showcase that what is agile in right way so um sepo are you there yes i'm here yes okay yeah. so i would ask this question to you why is daily stand up important well um the daily stand up is important cuz it, it help the team to check um the their works like what they did um yesterday uh what they going to do today and help them to to know if there's any impediment and how they can remove it and move forward okay good so how can we put it better you started with you have a team to check on the very first three words you have gone against the agile principles or the scrum exactly. values you do not have teams to check on you are a servant leader so you are telling that you are not a servant leader <clears throat> so whose responsibility it is the responsibility or the accountability is of the team it is for them i am a mere facilitator but why it is important for the team it is important to check the progress and if there is any deviation from the trend line or the requirement or if there is any impediment or you get to know that you won't be able to reach the destination which is your sprint goal in that case you raise alarms maybe you will take corrective actions so what is i am again going into that black screen i have shown you empiricism transparency so daily stand up helps to bring in transparency where we are what are the challenges that we are having if there is an impediment okay so this is a forum that you have helped create and self sustainable so that people can make it transparent so that we can inspect how can we make it better and adapt 
so daily stand up helps you in continuous or daily improvement check progress and be on the target that's answer you need not tell what is your what is your role or why it is needed for you because that's not the question so listen the question why it is important that's that's the real question so show your listening <clears throat> there now next why or how can a scrum master track the progress of a sprint who would like to take that except you said yes some someone was speaking yeah hey, uh, this is nizam here like a general take this question like uh, sure uh, uh, going through the uh, burn down chart of the information radiator mm -hmm. the master will be having a clear idea of like, uh, how the uh, things are moving on mm -hmm. uh, if any deviations uh, from the uh, chart like uh, he can have idea like if the people are not filling the uh, time properly mm -hmm. then uh, he can talk to the team and like uh, ask them to be uh, more uh, attentive towards at entering the time so that the, the graph mm -hmm. is visible to everyone clearly sure okay so uh, scrum is basically a very non prescriptive framework you started your answer with a burn down so what if i say i don't know burn down burn down how do i track Um, it happens in the daily call also, right? Uh huh. Daily stand, so, daily scrum call. Uh huh. Yeah, but but what is the answer? Uh, yeah, like I mean, uh, you're you're on track. You're on track. Yeah, yeah. People are on track or not? That uh, that information will be shared. In mm -hmm. If I approach it. i would not go any tool way burn down burn up and there are thousands of tools that can help you i would make sure that there is a visibility where the progress is what is happening day in day out so i would create some model some way that things are transparent and visible so that everyone tracks the progress now the question is is you know it's a trap how can a scrum master track the progress of a sprint it's a trap yeah. you need not check the progress right you are one of the person everyone should see the progress and take a decision because scrum master is one individual can fall sick can be unavailable because of the holidays or something so that responsibility is not only with the scrum master but everyone so this is how i check whether the person has the knowledge or he is being into part of some team or something and that's why he has experienced burn down and hence is giving or he she is giving an answer about burn down so that's what is the thinking that's going on in the interviewer's mind so they would like to sometimes uh, they'll say a question no i don't know burn down i yeah, never used it so interview is a generally you know especially for scrum master it's like uh, asking a very big question and then setting a trap and then going into deeper kind of this is what generally uh, some interviewers do how is estimation in scrum project done what are the techniques used for estimation who would like to go now anyone yeah uh, can i take this nizam here i mean yeah sure please yeah like uh, er earlier we used to do the uh, uh using the uh, poker card and then uh, mm -hmm. after after some time like the team were very much comfortable and then we they used to verbally tell the kid you know what the score point is to point mm -hmm. and uh what techniques used for estimation and it's like uh, i'm not i'm not getting it mm -hmm. very good okay so how is estimation in scrum projects done 
so this is a very generalized question it's not very specific to you okay so while you are answering answer generally uh, give the answer generally and then maybe you can put in in my experience that's a way to answer okay so yeah but you said like um, you know, planning poker you said right or uh, size estimation something like that yeah planning poker yeah yeah okay and what are the techniques used for estimation so now this is a a little broader question okay uh, what techniques that you can use so you're saying planning poker anyone else would like to answer this t-shirt t-shirt yeah. sizing t-shirt sizing okay pocket system dot voting mm -hmm. okay can i use function points can i use a for estimation now i am asking a very objective yes or no question can i Yes. I, I asked the open ended question yes. first yeah yeah so yes, three point can you yes. yes yeah nobody stops you if it works for you awesome any technique is good in fact the planning poker itself is based on delphi wide band technique which was very famous earlier in waterfall yeah so any technique i am a big fan of function points technique especially for the technical products because it was really bang on there was no ambiguity i know that how many inputs are there how many output variables are supposed to be there input points output points read write copy i know so that's a way so you can later on tell yes any estimation technique is is okay as long as it works for you uh however in my own experience i have used function points it worked well i have used um planning poker it worked well for planning poker technique what i used is now going inside t-shirt size fibonacci series so you are going deeper into planning poker now so that's how our questions are framed what motivates you to be a servant leader very big question for this i would need help from said what motivates you now this is not very specific to your um, uh, work area also this is very generic you as an individual what motivates you yes who would like to go na vishad uh, this slide yeah let's take a goal oh okay uh, i wanted to say i think for me personal i'd say that normally uh, the fact that people tend to like what uh, sid said earlier on that people would make you a leader so i believe that if i say to the people that i'm available and i'm mm -hmm. here for you and i'm here to make sure that we we achieve the end goal that mm -hmm. way people would tend to be more open to me and then they'll tend to want me to take the lead role because i'm not imposing myself on them i'm not trying to say that you know we must do things one two three way but i'm saying i'm here for you we are here to make sure we get the end goal together so that way because i am i'm giving myself into the people i'm like i'm not imposing myself so that way kind of motivates me to become a seven leader because i'm not imposing myself and i'm letting people like uh take me in and allow themselves to have me in and use me and that way they no longer see me as like i'm being bossy yeah very good so you you answered in so many words uh, not bossing or something like that but i liked one part of your answer what was that one part you you spoke about the returns that you get they will accept you as leader that's the return that you are getting so what motivates that return motivates you said do you have uh, are you there sorry yeah i'm here yeah <laughs> yeah i think the more experience you have yeah the more you would like to share yes and the best way to share that is to be a servant leader so that for me it may be different for other people but for me i think that the best way i can share what i know or share my learnings share my knowledge is by being a servant to the team so then i am not i am not 
the kind of boss or the teacher, but I'm there to share what I know. Mm-hmm. And in that sharing, I will learn from them as well. Mm. It's, it's always a two-way traffic. It's not a one-way traffic. When I share yeah. my learning, when I share my knowledge, I will get uh, counterpoints. I will get uh, you know their views as well. And it will increase my learning as well. So I think a servant leader role is essentially that. And that is, well, for me, that is what motivates me to be a servant leader. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, one of the answers that I liked ever given by somebody, you know, and uh, that, that girl was not much experience. She told me absolutely, absolutely truth, truthful answers. Ask this question, what motivates you to be a servant leader because you're going into that role? So what she said, I do not know what motivates me. I am that kind of person. So what she is telling here is, there's no motivation required for me because motivation can fail at times. I am that kind of person. I failed in the authoritative environment, but wherever I'm, I'm having my service mentality, that kind of work is given to me. I prosper a lot. And the interviewer thinks, oh, wow, that's the person I want. Because that's, that's imbibed inside. That's the person, that's the character that you are. Because motivation, many times it fails. You, you make a lot many, you're motivated for uh, having a, a goal for next year. How many goals you complete? Hardly few. Because motivation doesn't last long. That's the character you are. So that can also be answered in that way. Okay. What do you believe the role of the Scrum Master is? The question is, what do you believe the role of a Scrum Master is? Forget about the Scrum Guide. Forget about what people say. What do you believe? How is it different than a project manager? Please, who would like to go? So it's just a trial. Don't shy about it. And thanks for uh, being open and uh, uh, trying that. Yes. Who's next? Yeah, Nilesh here. So, yes, Vijay, uh, I would like to uh, answer this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as I have, uh, I'm not a Scrum Master certified or something, but yeah, from my experience, I would say that uh, Scrum Master role will be uh, very specific, uh, wherein mm-hmm. I have some deliverables which I need to, you know, uh, get it done from my uh, team, uh, mm-hmm. wherein the project manager obviously has. Uh, more responsibility than me but ultimately uh, the goal of project manager and me will be almost equal wherein i have that additional requ- uh, responsibility of uh, you know managing people which is a you know a very uh, critical task that i just want to say yeah that's it okay so uh, now in your answer you stated that both the roles are there both the roles are required uh, you gave a feeling that also in Scrum or Agile, both the roles are required. And project manager is a higher yeah. role than a Scrum master. That's what I got. I'm telling you now, I would not tell you answers. What, as an interviewer, what I got from this answer, that's what I would like to try next for this one. Okay, from my side, uh, this is Hari Narayan. So like uh, something mm-hmm. like a decision maker. So Scrum master cannot make decision, but project manager is having an authority to make decisions. And the like a budget and also on the scope sometimes and also overall uh, he is exposed to many projects in a program but scrum master mm-hmm. is uh, some little bit role is something to the team only he is uh, having that uh, constraint mm-hmm. uh, okay. those are the things i can say from myself yeah. okay yeah Good. a little bit of differentiator yes yes please yeah uh, like this scrum master like uh, role uh, he should be a good observer and uh, let the team make mistakes and like from that inspect and adapt and like uh, go forward. And like uh, he should be accessible to people and like uh, uh, for to the point like if the project manager people will be hiding some issues or kind of thing. So uh, as a scrum master, the people will be very much <laughs> open to like, hey, this is what the issue okay. like. Uh, so yeah. it will be open uh, on that ground and like those things can be addressed very easily. Okay, sure. So you, you make, made a statement here, project managers can be hiding certain things. 
yeah like uh, no Maybe. the team team will be hiding something from the project manager like uh, Why? they will be sharing yeah Why? like uh, it, it will hit their appraisal anyway in some time like hey uh, you have done a blunder mistake so if it comes to scrum master like within the sprint they can solve it and sit together and like it can be done hmm Hmm. Okay. He can, he, he can be an inspiring person. Like, hey, uh, I told him. Like, we discussed it and like solved it easily. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, uh, for me. Um. Okay. I'm Netra here. For me, a uh, scrum master. The role of a scrum master is to empower the people around him. But uh, a project manager, like always, he holds the power with himself. So. um that is why the people will be shy uh, to uh, open up themselves and um, yeah um for me i'll say um a project manager is a driver it drives the team you know exactly he wants it to be he wants the pro- he wants to keep to the project timeline he wants to keep to this time he wants to to keep to the scope he wants to keep to the budgets so it drives the, the the entire team towards achieving those particular three objectives Whereas the scrum master is meant to look after the team to make sure that the team is okay, to remove all impediments, and to keep on motivating them to deliver. Very good. I mean, you you brought uh, uh, very specific points about what a project manager is. By nature, uh, whoever the person is, I mean, there can be a person who is really really good at heart and still behave like a scrum master, but still holds the um responsibility or accountability of a uh, project triangle what is that scope schedule and cost so the accountability is with one person now in scrum master this scenario scrum master does not have any accountability towards this however the responsibility or the accountability of the scrum master is his team should work well team decides this team decides on how does it go like um the project management triangle or generally which is not there in the scrum ideally but the leadership style itself is different the leadership style generally what suits to a project manager is typically a authoritative style by the nature of it by the demand of it however a scrum master you are a servant leader you are not the you are, you are not the person who is driving you said it right driving so the differentiating factor is driving the differentiating factor is the amount of accountability that is there so these are the key factors that you should differentiate between however you can then go into um, you know different experiences of yours but fundamentally what is the difference that is the key here do not show uh, them because at times you know how it may boomerang the person sitting in in that room <laughs> might be a project manager so do not make it a personal issue uh, answer it from the objective perspective from the pmp perspective or something like that what's time now yeah 824 uh yeah any questions are on on this uh, we should go ahead to next question so good fair enough okay some situations product owner is authoritative and demanding what do you do as a scrum master i need to take this uh, you know uh, ask to my project manager mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we'll have to you know we'll have to make him handle it because uh it's all about uh, you know ma- making a change management decision so mm-hmm. uh, wherein a uh, project manager has uh, more you know, accountability uh, uh, towards it okay good try who's next would like to try um, uh okay i'll try yeah, you go sure. okay. it's okay you go you go don't worry go Oh okay. I think um as a scrum master you're supposed to be helping in problem solving and coaching. So it might be that maybe the the, the product owner doesn't really have knowledge of uh agile. So I think as a scrum master it's a matter of like trying to coach or help mm-hmm. 
yeah, coach the product owner in how, uh, what you call the scrum works so that they don't, they, they, their leading style is a bit different. Yeah, good, good answer. So uh, if I'm there, I would say, yeah, so be it. Yeah, it, it's, it's a personal style. Uh, our product owner is a very responsible and accountable role and is more pressed on delivering it to market. So, so be it. That would bring in positive change or positive attitude or, uh, you know, delivering more or something like that. So we would have a bigger goal. That's absolutely okay. However, I would like to protect the interest of my team. I would like to understand why the product owner is authoritative and demanding. That's absolutely okay. No, no, no problem. That, that's fine. But it shouldn't cross a limit wherein it would intrude into the rights of my team. In that case, as you rightly said, I would like to coach. Yeah, so this is good. Being authoritative and demanding is, is not a problem for a product owner. That, that's absolutely okay. Absolutely okay. But I would make my team so strong that they deal with it. You don't change a person, but you change the environment. Yeah, but very, very well answered. Scrum master and product owner is the same person. Because we have a small team. We can't afford that. How would you answer? It cannot be. Uh, hi, this is Pramod here. Scrum master and product owner uh, cannot be the same person. So dual hatting on this uh, respect uh, will have many chaos. And uh, mm -hmm. as a product owner, you will not uh, do the justice. Like if you are a scrum master for the product, it's a different game. But uh, as you, when you treat yourself as a product owner, then you mm -hmm. might have a different uh, uh, th uh, thought uh, where you stand. Because many times, yeah, yeah. as a product owner, you need to give justice to what you foresee for the product. And the servant leadership activity, what uh, as a scrum master you have to do, will have a toss. That's my understanding. Yeah, very good. So here, your scrum knowledge or uh, agile knowledge or from your experience would be really, really important here. So you should throw certain ex experience uh, from you. As you rightly said, or as you said that fundamentally, these two roles are, um, you know, different roles, different accountability and responsibility. If you make it together at one person that there, there is a lot of, um, you know, conflict, conflict of interest. In that case, person may not behave rightly and you will not get the right benefits. It may work, may work, but you will not generally get the right benefits. And this is not generally... Uh, suggested yeah however in my experience I would, I would also say that i would answer this way i would also say that uh, am i doing scrum or do we really need to do scrum so i would also question that if this is a scenario am i doing force fitting i would like to also go into that so what i'm bringing in here is i'm bringing in the real agile or scrum expectations i'm bringing in my experience i'm also questioning the implementation itself Next question, what if the key role only tester is not available or goes on emergency leave inside the screen? Would like to go. Uh, uh, the... Sure. Actually, I, I had this scenario uh, in, uh, in uh, but in this case, uh, I I took the responsibility of uh, playing a dual dual hat as a mister here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the emergency leave for the tester uh, uh, in one of the scenario happened, and uh, uh, told uh, we as a one team. Uh, we have to be cross-functional and uh, uh, need to support the team at any point of time. So mm -hmm. we did not have an alternate. So uh, I, as a scrum master, uh, played a uh, tester role for three days uh, to support uh, the sprint goal is achieved. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, 
Your answer is good. However, what you are doing is you are answering uh, from your situation itself. You should generally answer that this can be the thing. However, in my experience, this is what has happened. This is what we did. Okay. So the very first thing is problems may come. Agile is not a silver bullet that will solve all your problems. Scrum is not a silver bullet that will solve all your problems. We are still people dependent on software making or product making. It may happen. However, we would learn from it. Uh, we would see if somebody else can pitch in and do that work. However, if still it doesn't work or we are not able to do delivery, we would go into retrospective or I will generally call a short discussion amongst the people and what do we do? What do we do? And I would seek answers from people, giving them the ownership. Is the real answer here? Uh, don't be judgmental about giving this thing. What will you do? You, you shouldn't be judgmental as a servant master. What you are doing, what, what you need to show? You need to show you are a servant leader. In this case, you would go to team. Hey guys, we have a situation here. Now, what do you suggest? How do we do a go about it? So you are a facilitator here. You, you don't be judgmental. You don't take an answer here. And that's how you would be a servant leader showing the uh, ownership culture in your team or something like that. This is what. So what I answer, I'm not expecting an answer here. I don't really expect an answer here as an interviewer. What I'm looking at is your presence of mind, your knowledge, your, your real um, uh, ownership culture that you believe in, team building culture that you believe in, or real um, servant leadership that comes into picture. So answer is not important here. Your approach is more important here. So yes, we won't be able to talk so many questions uh, today um, uh, because time is over. So uh, yes, any uh, last questions on that from you, uh, whatever we have covered till now? If, uh, close this session. Any 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 closing questions, guys, or any any experience from how was it today? If required, if you need it, just text here. Uh, if you need one more session, so I would go into deeper uh, of more and more questions uh, in the next one. Uh, just message here. Uh, any experience sharing? How was it today? Uh, Hello, I mean, uh, was it, to here. Yes. I have two yes. questions for you. Can you please, like, you know, briefly, uh, like, you know, suggest how to answer those two questions? Yeah. Yes, uh, the first question is, I recently attended an interview where the requirement is for a scrum master, a single scrum master, who, who mm -hmm. would be handling six teams. So okay. six teams. Yeah. And when I asked, like, you know, how will that be justifying with the role and uh, mm -hmm. what they are expecting, like how the, the benefit, what they are expecting will not be, uh, will not be met. So mm -hmm. then the cross question was like, why do I think so? And like, you know, uh, then I did not like, you know, I couldn't explain them like, uh, mm -hmm. so what could have been the better way of answering that question? And this is the yes, real, but... this is the real requirement. Mm -hmm. It is not a scenario based question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, in that case, very quickly, I would like to answer this way. So because even I don't want to tell that this is what the scriptures say or um, well say. From the proven uh, scriptures or knowledge, it is said that a scrum master is good for two uh, teams to do justice to his or her role. Yeah. Be a scrum master, continuous improvement, that team goes on a continuous improvement path. You know, For that, two teams are generally enough but however, if you need a role like a facilitator, in that case, it's your choice. That's your choice. Whether you would like to be uh, into that facilitator role, you would say that, yes. However, I won't be able to bring in that continuous improvement from my experience I'm telling you. Okay. If you need, yeah, uh, I would be a facilitator in that case. But the expectation of the continuous improvement, that uh, layered improvement that I can bring in, that may not happen. It is doable very much, but that would be just a facilitator role. Okay. Given a scenario that imagine that you as, I, as a scrum master required, imagine all six teams, uh, the review falling on the same day, how a person can be available there. It's not possible. Yeah, I asked the same question. 
And yeah. then they said like, you know, if, when it comes to the scrim, uh, scrum ceremony and all, it is just an update, status update. So that will mm -hmm. be, uh, that is doable, it seems. So yeah. I did not, I did not or, have any further points to say to the recruiter. <laughs> or another, uh, you, you should be open-minded and saying that. If, if at all you want to give, don't be, see, um, just one word of caution here. See, uh, yesterday was waterfall. Today is agile. There might be a different version of it. So this world is going continuous improvement. Way. Everything is changing. Change is the only constant. So what is more important? The value delivery is more important. So you can give a suggestion that in that case, I can work as, as, as the way a agile coach works. I would give certain responsibility of the things to some team members. Okay. And then this is what I would like to do. So this is way, yeah, I mean, we can do it. I mean, there's no way that we can, nobody would stop us. But <laughs> this is way, way model would work. Um, yeah, but however, I'm not experienced into it. I'm experienced into handling a, a team. But if you do not want, if you want me to handle six teams, this is what it would be the model uh, if you really want to bring in challenge. So in that case, I would be coaching those extended scrum masters. Okay. I would like to answer that way. Okay. And the second is not a question. It, uh, in fact, I would like to have a suggestion from you. Suppose a person joins as a scrum master to an organization uh, which mm -hmm. is about to start Agile. Means the team is completely new. They don't have any idea about the Agile. And they are into mm -hmm. data, uh, like, you know, uh, what we call domain. Most of the team mm -hmm. members are into data analysis and data scientist role. So how should a Scrum Master approach in that case? The Scrum uh, is domain independent. However, uh, the delivery pattern that can happen or the delivery schedule that can happen or sprint length that can happen, that will change. Otherwise, things will remain same. You will have to train people. You will have to make people aware about how Scrum works. Okay. That is the primary step. Without that, it would be, it would not give you value. You know, people would not understand why we are doing that. And if they do not understand, they will not buy the idea of this agile or unknown agile. And hence, I suggest that people should be aware of it. And that's why every should, why everyone should have a, some formal session training, a collaborative session where everyone is in there almost. Uh, if you want me, I would not like to do in two day session, maybe a break, break, break kind of, you know, so that's what I approach sometimes, you know, I say, okay, every day, some one hour session, I would like to do something like that. Okay. Thanks, Vijay. Thanks for your sure. uh, ideas yeah. and suggestions. Thanks. You're welcome. And uh, I have already written a blog. I have already written a blog. Uh, I have just given a link here in the chat. It's on the agilewaters.com. So that's really uh, today, it's the highest followed blog, uh, number one, kind of, you know, for uh, Scrum Master questions. If you have certain questions, please message us. Uh, send uh, to this email ID so that I can add it and make it more enhanced version of it. Yeah, you can directly send me email. If you have any questions, I would like to answer you. If there are so many questions, then I would like to have one more session. So I'm getting all the questions areas. Yeah, thought provoking views like ideas and Thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you. It was really wonderful.